Well, good morning. Glad you're here. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here and all of those that um, are at brunch somewhere <coughs> this morning. But it's wonderful to, uh, to see you, and I hope that uh, you have a great day if you're a dad, and I hope your family just uh, lets you uh, lay around or do whatever or bring you food or just, uh, just make it your day. In other words, just like any other day for, for dads in the house. So I hope you have a wonderful time. A couple of um, announcements. Told Alan there weren't. Really not announcements, but um, one, um, my neighbor, John Gray. John, I got disturbing news from John. Um, happy for him, but sad for us. Uh, they are heading back to Florida. So uh, they sold their home, and uh, uh, that's good news. I'm glad, because you never know with homes these days. And uh, they'll be packing up and loading and uh, moving, what, uh, Friday, John, right? Yeah, wow. Well, it's been a blessing having uh, John and Ruth back with us, and um, but we're going to miss them. So, uh, John, safe travels, and I uh, know we'll, we'll meet um, maybe in disaster relief area soon and doing well. It's good to see you, and we've, we've loved having you. Um, other thing is, uh, we do have, Alan didn't mention it, we have Vacation Bible School coming up in July. Great things planned for the children. We do need some more workers. I know Alan's been working feverishly, thinking about other people that aren't involved, but if you have not considered Vacation Bible School to be a worker, and this is the scary part, in a classroom with real kids, okay? Uh, we need workers in some preschool classes. I know we need a fourth grade um, leadership group. So really pray about that. Or if you're in another area and there's, there's plenty in another area like crafts or refreshments or something, and you can go in with the children, uh, let Alan know. We certainly don't want to lower our registration due to we don't have enough workers. So, Well, it's uh, good to be with you. I also thank you for allowing me to have a little uh, break and vacation last week. I had a good time. Thank you for letting me come back and be able to recover from my vacation for the next few days. So uh, I do appreciate that. Well, let me uh, share a little thought with some thoughts with you on this passage from Mark that... Um, that aren't read as we, as we move through this wonderful gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I remember back in the, um, in the 90s, probably the early 90s, some of you won't remember this song, but it's a country song by Randy Travis. And um, Randy Travis sang a song, and part of the lyrics of the song said, The storms of life are washing me away. The storms of life are washing me away. And I am sure that at some point in your life and in mine, uh, we have sung that verse or thought those words at some moment. Uh, many times um, events just happen in our life that we never think we will get through. We just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel coming soon enough. We feel abandoned sometimes. We feel lonely. We're, we're left scarred many times from the hurts that even other people and sometimes those that we love dearly bring upon us and make us hurt. And at times we, we feel that God is, is no longer near or God just doesn't care for us in those moments. But the Bible says that there's hope in these situations. And that hope rests in the one, the Son of God, that can handle any storm that comes in our life, that can wipe away every tear from our eye, and He can create a calm in our innermost being where there was once turmoil. And that's a great promise from the Gospels and from Scripture. And Mark today gives us a narrative from Jesus' life that that reminds us of that, that assures us that when storms come up and we're in, in the midst of a frightening ride of our life, that Jesus can still calm our soul in the midst of it. 
So let's look at this wonderful story from Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41, where Jesus reminds us of this. The story starts off by saying uh, Jesus goes with his disciples. It, it's crowded. He's been teaching. He wants to get away. So he goes with the trusted sailors, uh, the trusted fishermen, to the middle of the lake. They're going to cross to the other side. And as they get to the middle of the lake, the Bible says a furious squall comes up and the waves break over the boat so that the boat is nearly swamped. Now, the Lake of Galilee is notorious for its storms, and, and it's notorious because the storms would literally and could literally just come out of the blue without any warning. Sometimes terrific winds would, would cause these squalls to come up. It would be perfectly clear all around, and the squalls would come up, and just uh, furious waves would happen. And one of the reasons is the mountains around the Lake of Galilee formed a type of wind tunnel. And it would be a northeast wind that would come in, sweep in the midst of these, these mountains, and just really cause the sea to be disturbed. And this squall was terrible. It was, it was so terrible that the disciples, many who were fishermen, many who were very experienced in the boat, were afraid for their lives. And in their minds, uh, there was a great need for Jesus to enter into this situation and do something. And it tells us about the storms in our life that can come up quickly and suddenly when we're not ready for them. We all know in the world in which we live, Storms of life can happen in the twinkling of an eye, can't they? We live in a hectic world. We live in a world where there's so much pressure, there's so much tr uh, stress, where anxiety and depression is just going through the roof, and bombshells can simply come at a moment's notice and numb us and cause us to go in, into emotional sometimes physical shock. Now, in recent years, and you've probably read it, there's been research in the area of stress and, and how it affects our health. And, and it's been found that a person can only take so much stress before it catches up with them. No matter how strong we are, no matter how tough an outer shell we project, if we have enough stress in our life, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health can be greatly affected. It's been um, discovered that all kinds of events in our life can cause stress and wear on our spirit, mind, and bodies. Things like um, a death in the family or especially the death of a spouse or a child, marital problems, relationship problems, divorce, uh, maybe it's a recent loss of a job or retirement or health problems or financial problems, change in work. You know, even though uh, school is out, it seems like I'm sure uh, Christy would tell you school being out is a great stress reliever, but it also can bring stress too because there's new things that will be happening in the next days and the coming weeks. Retirement, uh, major achievements in life. Oh, sorry, John, moving to a new town, a city, or just moving in general can be very, very stressful, even though there's hope, it seems, on the other side. But all of these pressures combined can, can build up, and all of a sudden... Where the sky looks blue, we can find ourselves in a very troubled time in our life. And we wake up one day or we go to bed and we, we start ruminating at night and can't go to sleep. And we discover all of a sudden that we're afraid or we feel lonely or we feel lost. And we don't know which way to turn. And, and sometimes even like those disciples, we may even feel 
a fear for our life. Anxiety can become so great. Storms of life can come quickly, and they can leave us tossing and turning because we just feel like we cannot control what's going to happen next. We've all been there. The second thing with that is in times like this, even for the strongest believers, even for those that have Jesus as close as right in the boat with them, we can blame Jesus. We can blame God in times like these. And in some way or another, we can ask the questions that the disciples ask and cried out, Jesus, don't you care that we're drowning in this stress? Don't you care that I'm drowning in these problems? Don't you care that I'm drowning in these troubles that are just piling up on me? And we feel, too, like Christ has has gone to sleep on us and left us alone just to suffer the consequences. And soon we'll discover, though, if we really stay with our spiritual journey, that it's not Jesus who's moved but we who have forgotten him and have only remembered him because now we're in deep trouble. And if we only wait to go to Christ when we're in deep trouble, we'll not be prepared spiritually if we haven't prepared beforehand. When the storms of life come upon us suddenly, we need to learn not to rush to communicate our panic to Jesus, but maybe and we'll talk about this in a minute, but maybe be still and let God communicate his calm, his love to us. Because the second thing the story shares with us is we have a great resource that's always close by if we have Jesus with us. Isn't it good to know when the storms enter your life that you have the one in your life who is Lord of even the most unpleasant things that can happen to you. Now think about it. What's your typical response to the storms in your life? Where do you immediately go in your thoughts? Do you cry for help and say, what do I do now? Is that your personality? Do you get angry first and you say, why did this happen to me? Self-pity. Maybe you're one that uh, puts on a brave front. Yeah, things are rough, but I can tough it out. I can get through this. Maybe you just punt. I give up. I give up. Maybe you turn to God and you start crying out in prayer, help me out of this, Lord. I don't know what to do. One thing I think that confuses us, it it seems that our culture today, um, we think, we've been programmed to think that there's technology out there for every problem to make even the most difficult task easier. That there's technology out there that can take care of anything, even our stress. Well, I've got stress. I'm going to look up on my iPhone. There's got to be an app for that, you know? And there, there's even one on my Apple TV, it's a, a TV station now. It's called Calm. Really, and you can go on Calm and get all these really nice uh, soothing music and soothing videos. And yeah, don't worry if you're stressed out. Just go to Calm and listen to some melodious music and all will be okay. But you know, with all the, the world's apps and with all of our smartphones... There's not been anything invented to create calm and quietness of our soul, is there? There is a need, especially when all is hectic around us. There's a need for what the Bible calls and and, and tells us about. It's called solitude. And solitude, it's different from loneliness in that in solitude we discover there's a strength and a building of strength when we are alone with God. You see, we're really not alone, are we? Solitude is 
It is reassuring us of God's presence. Uh, it, it's the time we can spend alone with Him that's important for us to realize that God is there in the midst of our lives. God is there ready to care for us. It's why it's so important to carve out this solitude, this quiet time with God before the storms arrive to help us to know how in our spirit, in our prayer life, to be able to summon Jesus, to discover that Jesus is there in the bottom of the boat, close to us. You see, there is no great invention, but there is a great resource to the storms of our life. That resource is the very presence of Jesus Christ himself. And with Christ, we have this unfailing resource to help calm the turbulent times of our lives. And by daily walking with Jesus, we learn to stay ever close to him and, and never feel that he's asleep in our life. The idea that God has the whole world in his hands as the children sing maybe been one of the most, was one of the most liberating thoughts that came to man, is that God does have the whole world in his hands. And God is the center of the world and the universe, not us. We're a part of his big loving plan, and that can be comforting. Thirdly, there's a great hope. There's a great hope. The disciples... Um, and they ask a question at the beginning of the narrative. Doesn't Jesus care for us? Where is Jesus? And at the end of the narrative, after Jesus calms the storm, their question is, who then is this? Who then is this that can calm the storms around us? We've discovered something, fellas. Remember the very first verses of Mark. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All of Mark is saying, this is, this is not just a great teacher, a great philosopher. This is the Son of God. The great hope is that we have this assurance when we do call on our Lord, He will not let us down. He is there to say to our spirit, quiet, be still. He's there to, to let us know that all of the fear and the loneliness and anxiety, He can handle it. We may not be able to, but He can handle it. And with Him, we can too. Now, when Jesus says to you, quiet, be still for these storms you're facing, what does that mean to you? It can mean several things. When Jesus says that to you or, or when your faith reaches out and says, Lord, help me through this troubled time. Do you hear Jesus saying to you, hey, don't panic. I'm there. Do you hear Jesus say, maybe, let me handle this. I know what is best. Do you hear Jesus maybe saying, hey, quit rocking the boat. Slow down. Maybe he says to you, accept this storm as a gift and, and allow this storm to let you learn more about me. Maybe you hear Jesus say sometimes, you know, look for the rainbow. You'll gain strength. Or maybe Jesus just says, hey, God has it all under control. He has it under control. Because the gospel says when Jesus spoke to the storm, the winds died down and it became completely calm. When Jesus helps us, it's complete. It's once and for all help. And wouldn't you, maybe some of you this morning more than others, wouldn't you like to experience the calmness of Jesus right now in your life? Wouldn't you like to slow down? Wouldn't you like to find time for him? When Jesus calms our storms, he, he replaces the fear of the things of this world 
he replaces that with a, a different kind of fear. It's a reverent fear of God. That's the great hope. That's the great message of Scripture. The story seen as a whole, is, in fact, it's, it, it's, a, it's a picture of the beauty of God's grace. It's the picture of the beauty of salvation. That without Jesus, our lives are a mess. <laughs> without salvation, we can't handle the storms of life. And the big storms like sin <laughs> and like the fall... And like being separated from God. But Jesus, with one word, with one act of the cross, with, with one glorious power of the resurrection, can save us for eternity. And bring calm even to the eternal question of life. Where will I spend eternity? And I can spend it with God. I found one time, uh, Psalm 23, we almost all know by heart, right? I found this one time, it's from Japan. It, it's called the, the 23rd Psalm for Busy People. Let it call me today. <clears throat> it says, the Lord is my pace setter, I shall not rush. He makes me stop and, and rest for quiet intervals. He provides me with images of stillness, which restore my serenity. He leads me in the way of efficiency through calmness of mind. And his guidance is peace, even though I have a great many things to accomplish each day. I will not fret, for his presence is here. His timelessness, his all-importance will keep me in balance. He prepares refreshment and renewal in the midst of activity by anointing my mind with his oils of tranquility. My cup of joyous energy overflows. Surely harmony and effectiveness shall be the fruits of my hours, and I shall walk in the pace of my Lord and dwell in his house forever. That's why Mark put this story in the gospel. That's why it was preached in the early church and, and why it was preserved for us today. If you're going through the storms of life, any storm, know that Jesus is there. Look deep within your spirit and your soul and find refreshment and find calm. And if need be, find salvation for God is always there to accept you we're going to pray in just a minute and we're going to sing a, a, a song of a final song as we reflect on what God has said to us today and, and um, I know the Lord has been praised today we faithfully met and worshipped him and, um, and I pray that you'll have a great day of refreshment <laughs> and um, of remembering dad or honoring dad in a special way. Uh, we all have those memories and those opportunities to honor. And um, dads, if you're going through a time of stress, <laughs> you know, just rest in the Lord today as you rest physically, I hope. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you know, um, one reason you came is to, is to live this life in the flesh, and you know the, the stress, you know the, the difficulty, you know the, the pain of life. And Lord, um, just uh, teach us today to call on you, and you are as powerful today as you were then, to calm the storms of our life. We pray in Christ's name, amen.